All right, we're going to do a quick tutorial. Lori here. We're going to do a quick tutorial on how to change a word problem into variables for the time value of money calculations that we're doing. You have four word problems here, and I'm going to work through them. Let's go ahead and read the first problem. It has to do with giving money now to a library so they can run a program over many years. First thing we notice is that we're going to run a children's program for the next 25 years. That means our n, just number of periods, is going to be 25. You believe they need $10,000 a year. That's going to be your payment. Next, we are going to know, we know that our interest rate is either 2%, which is 0 0.02, or 12%, which is 0 0.12. And the final thing we need to decide is what is it we're solving for? Well, we're trying to put the money away now so that they can run the program over the next multiple years, so we are solving for present value. Let's go ahead and do our formula for that. Equals PV, parenthesis, the rate we're going to use for this one is 2%. Put in the comma, the number of periods is 25. Put in the comma, the payment is 10,000. We're going to put that in as a negative because otherwise our value for our present value is going to come out the wrong sign. And the future value is zero. We don't want them to have any money left over at the very end. So let's see what that comes up with. Yep, $195,000. That's what we would have to give them now if the interest rate environment was given, yielding only 2%. What would happen if we were, if it were yielding 12%? Um, well, this is the same, and this is the same. And we can just copy our formula right over. Why torture ourselves? And we'd only have to put away... 78,000. So if interest rates are high and we want to fund a program for multiple years, then we're going to have to put away a lot less. Let's do the next one. We've won the lottery. We can either have a million dollars now or $120,000 per year for 10 years. If we think the interest rate is 15%, what is that worth and what is the interest rate if it's only 2%? Well, the very first thing we know is that the present value is a million dollars of the first option. Do I have enough zeros there? One, two, three. Yes, I do. You can always check that by putting in our commas. Great. And we don't need those extra decimals. So this is lump sum. And if we can invest it, or if we um, can invest it at 15%, it, that's one of the options we want to look at. Apparently, they don't like it when I write that, so I'll just write 15%. And the other one is 2%. So if interest rates are running 15%, my gut feel is that we might want to take that money now and invest it ourselves, but we can do a an analysis right now to figure that out. So what we're going to solve for is the present value, and we know that our number of periods is... 10 years, and we know that our payment is $120,000. Be good if I put that in the right column. It's all right, we're going to use it over here anyway. Great. And we've got to put in our interest rate, which is 0.15 in this column and 0.02 in this column. This way we can solve right away for all both. Okay, so let's do our formula equals PV. Our rate is 15%. Put in our comma. Our payment is $120,000. we are going to put that in as a negative number so that we get the right sign on our present value. Put in our comma and our... Um, oops, I think we've got a problem here. Let's go back and start again. Our rate is that, comma, our number of periods, we want to go up here, that's right, then we pick up our payment as a negative number, negative payment, and the future value is zero, so we just hit the uh, close the parenthesis and hit return. Ooh, yep, if, we, if interest rates are running 15% and we don't take the money now, we take it over time, it's going to be only worth $602,000 as the present value. What happens if, though, interest rates are only 2%? Well... It looks like it's a bigger number because it needs more space. Yep, a million seventy-seven thousand. So if interest rates are seven are two percent, then we want to take the money over time. But if interest rates are fifteen percent or really anything over two percent, 
we probably want to take the lump sum. All right, that's two down, two to go. We're saving up for a new car. It costs 50 grand and we want to be able to pay for it in cash. How much do we need to save every month for us to have the $50,000 in five years? Well, the very first thing we want to do is our future value. That's what that is, is 50,000. And our interest rate is 5%, 0.05, and our N is five years. But we're gonna put away the money monthly, and we wanna solve for payment. That's what we're looking for, because it wants how much we're gonna set aside. However, the interest rate we really wanna use, it if we're gonna do it monthly, is this interest rate divided by 12 to get a monthly rate. And the number of periods is going to be 5 years times 12 months, or 60. And the future value is going to stay the same. So we can just slide that over, assuming I can drive. There we go. And now we need to solve for payment. Equals payment times the rate, which is this, times the number of periods. Never mind that it's got dollar signs in front of it. It's 60 is the right number, and we'll fix the signage after we get done. And the present value is zero. And the future value is negative 50,000. That's what we want to be able to pull out. Close our parenthesis. Our payment is $735 per month. Great. And I'm going to go ahead and fix that formatting so it doesn't drive you crazy. There we go. Last problem. We get $30,000 now. So that's going to be our present value. Present value, $30,000. Our interest rates are 10%. So interest is 0.10. See how I'm reading through the problem and pulling out each piece as I go? That's how I do it generally. And if I'm working on a word problem on an actual piece of paper, you'll see me write down the PV equals, in I equals, N equals, and then I'll usually write solve for and what it is I'm solving for. How much will we have available as a down payment if we wait five years? So N is going to be five years in the first case, and it's going to be 10 years in the second case. And we want to know how much we will have. Well, that's a future value, and that's what we're going to solve for. So we've got 30,000 in both cases. We've got 10% interest, and again, we've got this funky formatting. There we go. So we're going to do an equals FV parenthesis, our rate, which is the interest rate, our number of periods, which is five, our PV, which we want to put in as negatives because it's in brackets, and we can close her down there. Oh, sorry, that I put that in as a payment. Our payment is zero, and our PV is negative 30. There we go. Yep, we're going to have $48,000 in five years. What if we wait 10 years? How much can we put down? Well, we can put down $77,000. And that's it for this video. Hope it was helpful.